The content from this video is found from videos on the Electrical Code Coaches YouTube channel. Be sure to check out his channel as well as his videos. This will be a remake on the information found in his videos. I'll do my best to include everything that he did in his videos as well as try to explain some things that I think might need some explaining. So be sure to check out his original videos on the same topics. The link will be in the description. Welcome to this video all about gutter fill. The first rule we need to know about gutter fill is the cross-sectional area shall not exceed 20% of the cross-sectional area of the box. So when we're thinking about the cross-sectional area of a box, we're not thinking about volume. So something is missing and that would be the length, okay? So we're just talking about the depth and the height at this point, which is going to give us that cross-sectional area. And when it talks about how long the boxes that's going to be irrelevant if you're like me and like to actually see this in the code book then open up the nec code book and go to 366.22 number of conductors and you'll see a is sheet metal auxiliary conductors and b is non-metallic auxiliary conductors and if you read these you'll see they have the same rule the sum of the cross-sectional area of all conductors and cables at any cross-sectional area of sheet metal auxiliary gutters and also of the non-metallic auxiliary gutters shall not exceed 20% of the interior cross-sectional area. So we'll see this is actually very simple. If we go over to 376.22 of the code book, where it says a cross-sectional area of wireway, we see additionally it says the cross-sectional area of all conductors or cables at any cross-section of a wireway shall not exceed 20% of that interior cross-sectional area of the wireway. Okay, so this is with gutters and wireways. We also do see an adjustment factor for B. And we see that it mentions if you have more than 30 conductors at any cross section of the wireway, then you're going to want to use adjustment factors in 310.15C1. And this only applies to current carrying conductors. So neutral and hot conductors and not the grounding or bonding conductors. Also, when we're working with gutter fill, we're gonna be working with conductors that have a certain gauge and a certain wire type and to find the square inch, or in other words, the approximate area of these conductors, we're gonna go into chapter nine, table five, and we're gonna find the square inches that correlates with the conductor that we're using. As always, the questions will start off simple and then they'll get a little more complex as they move along. Okay, before I move on to the questions, it would really help me out if you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting a lot more content and this will be an active YouTube channel. So if you have any questions and you want to personally contact me, you'll also be able to do that. And I'm also making a lot of videos on very big points of electrical engineering that I don't think a lot of people realize are as important as they are. Okay, first question, we have a 12 inch by 12 inch by six foot long wireway. We see we're already working with inches. Okay, this is what we want because we're wanting to go for square inches. If this was in feet, we'd want to convert into inches and then figure out the square inches. You'll see why on the next questions. Okay, and just be mindful that we're working with square inches so we only have two dimensions and then we're not using how long it is so we can get rid of the six foot long Process of elimination, we already know it's 12 by 12. Now we also know why we're excluding the six foot long. So of course, if you have something that's 12 inches by 12 inches, and you multiply that 12 by 12, you have 144 square inches. Okay, now if this math seems like very simple for you, I'm not gonna be explaining it for all of them. So it will pick up speed, don't worry about that. But we're not done yet with this 144 square inches because we can only fill it to 20%. So the simplest way to not complicate this is 20%, if you don't know, written as a decimal, is just going to be 0 0.20, okay? Of course, you could just call that 0.2. I'm going to take this 144, and I'm going to multiply that by 0.2, and that will be how much I can fill this. Okay, we have 28.8, and remember this is just a percentage of the square inches we already had, so it's still square inches. This is now the cross-sectional area that we can fill this 12 by 12 by 6 foot long wire with. And simply all we did is 12 inches times 12 inches, 144, we got 20% of that, and that's how much we can fill this wire with. In other words, this is the max fill for the wire way. For this next one, I'm going to break it up into two parts. 
and the two different parts go together so it will help us solve the other questions after this okay in this one we have an eight inch by eight inch by four foot long wire width so we're simply going to disregard the fact that it's four feet long we know it's eight inches by eight inches besides that and now we're just going to do eight inches by eight inches and that's going to give us 64 square inches and again hold your horses we're not done 64 inches is the total area for this right now but we only want 20 percent of the total area so now we're just going to do 64 square inches and we're going to multiply it by 0.2 that will give us the amount that we can fill it it's going to give us 12.8 square inches that's how much we can fill this wire with now the second part of this is going to go into what if we wanted to fill this with actual wires and if you're familiar with the code book and especially chapter 9 table 5 this might already click with you okay so now how many 600 kc mil thhn will fit in the 12.8 square inch also mention that this is copper oftentimes they'll mention it's copper or aluminum and as we'll see when we know the type of wire the thhn and we know that size, the 600 kc mil. Then when we go into the table to actually find the size for that wire, we will see it doesn't mention copper or aluminum. And this is because the wire type is already telling us what type of wire we're using. This also gives us insight into the fact that when you have different sizes of wire, aluminum, or copper, it doesn't affect the square inch of it necessarily. As you can have copper and aluminum conductors that are the same square inches which makes sense that they could be the same actual size the area but what is different is when you go into let's say table 310.16 the impacity table and you start to rate the different wires for impacity and this is where you have a difference between aluminum and coppers when you're rating for impacity and to explain this shortly this has to do with your type of wire is telling you what type of sheathing you're going to be putting on that wire. And the opacity table is going to tell you when you have a certain wire type with a certain sheathing, then how much current can you run through that without the sheathing actually getting damaged with the current flow. Of course, there's some nuances that go on with this, but simply that is a simple explanation. And again, we're going to chapter nine, table five. And when we show up there, we're looking for THHN and we're looking for 600 kc mil. When we see that, we're going to where it says the approximate area and we're finding these square inches. And we see the number 0.8676 square inches. Okay, so now we have two things. We have the amount of space that we can fill inside of this wire wave since we took the 20% of that area. We have 12.8 inches. Next, we have the size of an actual single 600 kc mil THHN conductor, and that's the 0.8676. To find out how many of these conductors we can fit in the space we have, we're gonna take the size of that single conductor and divide it by the space that we're able to use. In other words, we're saying how many 600 kc mil THHN can fit in this 12.8 space. And if you simply think 100 divided by 50 okay it's two you could also say how many times does 50 go into 100 it goes into there two times so if we want to find out how many times number a goes into number b we're going to take number b and divide it by number a I'm trying to explain this in a few different ways i know different people think different ways we come up with 12.8 divided by 0.8676 that's going to give us the number 14.75 and it keeps going and of course, we're not going to use 0.75 of a conductor. So in fact, we're going to take this down to 14 conductors. So we're able to fit 14 600 kc mil THHN conductors in this 12.8 square inch space, which is, of course, 20% of the total space of this wire wire. Okay, next question. How many 500 kc mil THHN copper conductors fit in a six inch by six inch by six foot long gutter. Okay, so we already know we're gonna disregard the fact that it's six foot long. So in fact, we're just gonna do six inches times six inches. We're going to get, of course, 36 square inches now. And then we're just gonna take 20% of that. An easy way to do 20% in your head 
is you can think the 36 times 2, you can think that would be 720. And you can think, well, if I'm taking 2% of that, then that's probably going to more accurately be 7.2. When you're thinking about where you could put that decimal, it's probably not going to be 0.72. It's probably not going to be 72. So 7.2 makes sense. And if we punch it in on a calculator, we do see 7.2. So that's just a quick way that you can also do it in your head. And then you can always use a calculator to double check. I always recommend using a calculator, but that's just a good little trick that you can use for decimal points is just think about the number without the decimal point and then where that decimal point would probably fit back into that number that you have. Of course, we're working with square inches still, and we just took 20% of the square inches that we already have. And now we have 7.2 square inches of available space for this six inch by six inch gutter. Okay, now we just wanna know the size of a single 500 kc mil THHN copper conductor. We're gonna go into chapter nine, table five. We're gonna look for THHN 500, and then we're gonna see that we're looking at 0.7073 square inches. Now we have both the numbers we need to work with. We have the space left in the gutter, and we have the size of the single conductor. Now to find out how many of these conductors we can fit in this space, we're just going to take this space we're working with and divide it by the size of the single conductor. In other words, we're going to have 7.2 divided by 0 0.7073, and we come up with the answer 10.18, and it does keep going, but in fact, we're not using 0.18 or a part of a conductor, so we have 10 conductors here as the final answer. And this means we can fit 10 500 kc mil THHN copper conductors in a 6 inch by 6 inch by 6 foot long gutter. Okay, next question. What size wireway will work for two 600 kc mil THWN, two 4 aught THWN, and three number 4 THWN conductors? Is it A, 8 by 8? B, 6 by 6, or C, 12 by 12. Okay, of course, we're going to chapter 9, table 5. We're looking for the THWN, and first we're looking for the 600 kc mil, and we see 0.8676 square inches. Okay, and of course, there are two of those, so two times. Next, we want to find the 4 aught THWN. We look for THWN, 4 aught, we see 0.3237. And there are two of those. And now we just need to find the number 4 THWN, and we see that is 0.0824. Okay, so now we just need to multiply each one of these separately and then add them all together. So two times 0.8676. That gives us 1.7352. Then we're going to do 2 times 0.3237. We get 0.6474. And then we're going to do 3 times 0.0824. We're going to get 0.2472. Now we're going to add all three of these together. 1.7352 plus 0.6474 plus 0.2472 and we get 2.6298 inches squared and now we want to fit that into any one of these choices a b or c so let's start with the smallest one we'll do 6 times 6 equals 36 and then we'll do times 0.2 and we'll get 7.2. So we'll see that in the six inch by six inch wire way, we have the 7.2 square inches left over, and we're working with 2.6298 square inches for our conductors. So obviously that's going to fit, and we're gonna have quite a lot of room left over. So the answer is going to be B, and we're still going to be able to fit more conductors in there if we want. So that was it for this video. If you enjoyed this, Give it a thumbs up, share it with someone else that you think will find this useful, and of course, subscribe to see more. You're going to see a lot more videos coming out. As always, if you had any questions, leave that in the comments down below. If you want to personally contact me, contact this email. And until next time, take care. Goodbye.